Good afternoon and welcome to Homework Live. I'm Desiree Dubois, founder of An Empowered Woman and Homework. And today my guest is Karen Hall, who is the founder president of UDirect IRA Services. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Desiree. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with homework, homework is where you can live where you work, work where you live, anywhere in the world. So what we do is we acquire luxury style homes and we build out the bedrooms so women can live in them full time, part time, or as a drop in. And the conference rooms, uh, the dining rooms convert to conference rooms, the living rooms convert to meeting rooms, as a business center. Everything for that woman that wants to be have freedom and flexibility and wants to wants to live in a beautiful home without the maintenance and the mortgage. So that's what homework is. But some of the ladies have um, expressed interest in investing, but they didn't know that they could use other forms like the IRAs. And Karen is Karen is the expert on that. So Karen, take it away. Tell us how long you've been in business and how that works. Thanks, Desiree. Yes. At you Direct IRA Services, we were founded in, in 2009 and we've been going strong ever since. We have you know, thousands of account holders. They're sitting on hundreds of millions in assets. So that's all great. So what a self-directed IRA does is it lets you take your retirement from where it is and move it into a special kind of an IRA that lets you invest in what's called alternative assets, um, non-correlated assets, meaning basically just not the stock market, right? So things like a private stock, um, precious metals, uh, real estate, private notes. So we don't endorse any particular investment, but what we do is just give you the tools that you need to take your money from here where it is in a retirement account, or maybe you're gonna contribute, and then move it into a self-directed IRA so that you can invest in alternative assets uh, to retire on. One of the things that um, I admire is the fact that you get a chance to direct to where you want to go to. I guess if it's formally you're with a company or corporation, they usually select the options. This gives you the control to be able to do it yourself, correct? That's right. So sometimes you have an IRA account that's invested in the stock market and they call it self-directed. And it is in the sense that you can choose your own stock bonds and mutual funds. But what a truly self-directed IRA means is that you, you can invest outside the stock market. So now you're investing Again, private stock, houses, precious metals, notes, I mean, things that aren't the stock market. Yes, that's how that works. And so what are the advantages of doing that besides the obvious is being able to have more control of what you want to invest in? Yeah, I think that is the big advantage. And, and I think some other things to think about is like what you can and can't do. So when your IRA is investing, you want to make sure that it's not for personal use. So you would not invest um, in a place that you're going to live in personally, it would need to always be for investment purposes only, like a non-owner uh, occupied home and investment property and, and that sort of thing. Because there's some things called prohibited transactions you have to steer clear of. So you're not allowed to um, have any personal benefits. You're not allowed to do business with disallowed people. Um, those are your lineal ascendants and descendants, you know, your parents and grandparents and their spouses. And then you and your spouse, and then your children and your grandchildren and their spouses, up and down the family tree, disallowed. So your IRA doesn't do business with these people. So you're not going to have personal benefit. You're not going to do your IRA doesn't do business with these people, and you you don't provide good services or facilities to the plan. So if your IRA owns an asset, you don't like say like a house. You don't go in there swinging the hammer, but you can hire third party vendors to do the work. Same thing if your IRA owns private stock, you can't be like the treasurer of that company because then you're providing services to the plan that would be disallowed so important to know those rules and that's why when people call us we have like a, like usually about a 20 minute conversation about tell us what you're going to invest in you know how'd you hear about us and what are you doing but we want to know about that asset um what are you looking at doing and talking to them to see if we can hear that it's a self uh, prohibited transaction we're li listening for that and those complimentary consultations you do, those consultations you do complimentary. Yes, so there's no yeah. reason for someone to not find out information. Is it a long process? It is a tedious process. <laughs> <laughs> you make it. I wonder why more people don't do it. You know, I think a lot of people have it and don't do it. You're so right. No, it's it's a three-step process. Okay, so first is opening an account. We have an account form online. You type on this IRA intake form. It autofills the whole document. So. Within 24 hours, we have your account open. The second step is funding the account. So the way you do that is you can write a check and make a contribution. You have to talk to your tax person if you want to know how much you can contribute and that sort of thing. But you can contribute. You can do an IRA to IRA transfer where you fill out our form, you sign it, you give it to us, we sign it. 
you send it on to your custodian and then in comes the money into your account. That's a transfer, it takes about two weeks. Now, if you just left your job, I had talked to somebody uh, today who just left their job, they have a 403B, or if it's a 401k or a 457 or CalPERS or whatever it is, that's a rollover. That's a third way to get money in the account. So you contact the plan administrator, you fill out their forms, and then they send your money in. So you open an account, takes a day, you fund an account, takes about two weeks to get the money rolled over from another custodian. After it's open and funded, then you can invest. So you give us a direction letter. It's our one page form. You give us the supporting documentation, which is the contract, and we review and fund the deal. And then your IRA owns the asset. So that's how we do that. So other types of benefits would be? Right. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so <laughs> <laughs> the money that comes back in is tax free in a Roth or tax deferred, which is great. Um, you would pay income tax, say it's a, a traditional IRA where the money comes in tax deferred and then it grows tax deferred, but then when you take it out, you're taxed. So you would be taxed at your regular tax rate at that time when you, when you take a withdrawal. If it's a Roth that comes in, as long as you've met the five year rule and you're 59 and a half, you can take it out tax free for life. There's more to say about a Roth, but that's, that's pretty much it. So, right. So the tax deferral is the great thing because sometimes, you know, you can get hit with a with a big gain, it's like you, know, you grab the brass ring on an investment. We do really well. We don't have to pay tax on all that at once. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's the point? He's <laughs> in there, and then when you retire, you just take it out as you need it. It's a retirement plan, um, which is it, it's so great because it's not subject to the ups and the downs of the stock market that you and I were just talking about before we went live here. You know. Yeah, you just you were just sharing how the different things have just how us. Um, House went down already, and some people don't like that fluctuation. They don't invest in it because they don't, they're not comfortable with that. Um, how volatile right. it could be. It's so volatile. And you know, right now we have this huge section of our population. People are turning 65, 10,000 people turning 65 every day for the next decade, Ooh. right? So <laughs> tolerant are people who are turning 65 for their retirement assets. So that's, it's something to think about. I mean, that's, these are the decisions that we make as investors. Do we want to invest, like we were talking about in Bitcoin? Well, hey, you know, there's risk reward. I mean, what, what kind of risk tolerance do you want? Um, whatever you invest in, you have to consider the risk. But the self-directed IRA vehicle is just a platform. It's like a mm -hmm. checking, think of it like a checking account where it's neutral, where the bank doesn't tell you what to write your checks for. You know, you okay. self-direct your checking account, right? You go to the bank, you say, take my money and send it here. You write a check, use a debit card. You're telling the bank where to send your money. Well, we do sort of the same thing, except that we're going to custody that asset. So it's not just, you know, you go going and buying some new clothes. And, you know, uh, but is on, um, so we custody the asset. So we're going to review the asset before we disperse the money. So it's a, it's, it's a tool to use for investment where we're not recommending investments. Okay, then that's a good clarification for people to know to do their research and their due diligence independently prior to, and then okay. bring that information to you. Now, mm -hmm. in all types of transactions, sometimes there's a, I don't, I don't want to say the disadvantages, but some of the things that they should be aware of that um, is involved in doing transferring their IRAs in that way. Before you invest, you have your due diligence, and there's nothing more important. I mean, you want you want to find out, talk to other people who've invested in that same asset. Uh, take a look at who are the principals um do they have a criminal record <laughs> because what if they did and you invested with somebody that had a criminal record and you didn't know that i mean you you know if anybody who has a cell phone has you know the, the oracle of human knowledge in their hands and so you just type on there you know the person mm -hmm. and learn about mm -hmm. them just learn about mm -hmm. them find out about the person find out about that asset class where is it going and then you make a calculated decision after an informed decision but if you're buying an asset that needs to get recorded, make sure you do your due diligence up front, but then do the due diligence on the back end to make sure, like say it's a lien, like a, like a house or, or a note, did it get recorded? I mean, does your IRA actually own that asset? Was it recorded? Do you have a secure document? So things to look for. And then what about at the end, say for example, you want to liquidate that, maybe you want to sell that asset or maybe the real, if it's against real estate and that real estate property is sold, how do you dissolve it or how, what do you do then? Do you, can you transfer it to another asset or does it go, how does that work? Right. So your IRA, you open your IRA, you buy it, your IRA buys a house and you hold it. And all expenses of an IRA have to be paid for by the IRA. So your IRA is paying the bills, paying the bills. 
all proceeds must come back into the IRA that owns the asset. So that's really important too. So now you sell it. You go to escrow. Escrow issues a check made payable to the IRA. It goes back in your IRA account. And now you've got cash in your IRA account. So you think, well, you know, I either, hey, here's this other alternative asset I want to invest in and you go invest again. Or you say, hey, I want to put it in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So you can certainly transfer your, your funds out later on into the stock market. Or you can leave them in the self-directed IRA and find another alternative asset to invest in. So what does IRA stand for? Individual Retirement Arrangement. You know, it came up. <laughs> These are nothing new. You know, people think that <laughs> directed IRAs, they're new. It was 1974 when President Gerald Ford signed the ERISA laws into effect. I mean, hey, longer than some of your listeners have been alive, okay? <laughs> and so it went to effect in 75, right? And so it, the IRS just said, look, your IRA can invest in anything except um, insurance, life insurance, and collectibles. Now, that's all they said. Not what you can do, but what you can't. So your, your IRA also doesn't invest in, like, become a shareholder of an S corporation, not because the IRS says so, but because S corps don't let non-human entities be owners. So those are some of the things you can't do. So that's what the IRS says. Then you come to a self-directed IRA company and assets may or may not be what's called administratively feasible. Is it administratively feasible? <laughs> and make a business decision to hold that asset or not. So there's what the IRS says and then what the custodian is willing to hold. Um, so some custodians will custody livestock, for example. We do not. <laughs> because having all those, you know, cows in the office gets a little, you know, gets a little <laughs> So, so uh, you know, <laughs> livestock is not administratively feasible. For some, <laughs> it is. So we get we get the choice of make a business decision of what assets we will or not custody. And when people are selecting a company like yourself, um, what should they be looking for? For some of the things that they should check off to make sure that. Yeah. that well, I mean, yeah. what we all provide to answer your question is we all provide, uh, you know, a service for a fee. And that's what you're getting. So how is the service? And I think people really like our company because when they call in, they get a person that answers the phone. They have a relationship with that person. They're assigned to one transaction coordinator. They know who they are. And so people really like that. We pick up the phone, we answer, we return phone calls. So the service is great. And then the fees, our fees are among the lowest in the industry. So we, we rank really well in service and fees. So the fees, are they based on the amount of the transaction or is it a flat fee? How does that work? Just to give people an idea of what the starting point would be. Yeah, our industry does it different ways. Some companies charge you per year per asset. Mm -hmm. Some companies charge you a sliding scale. So the more your account's worth, the more you're charged. Some give you a choice between the two. But we charge a flat fee. So it's one fee regardless of the number of assets, regardless of their value. We charge one flat fee. Fantastic. And there's a range of that approximately for those of you who are thinking like I need to do this. They can yeah. at two hundred and seventy five dollars a year. And you can go on our website, which is the letter U, U Direct IRA dot com. We have a fee schedule, we have so much educational information there that you can learn. Um, you can learn from we have a white paper on there, you can click and get a free white paper and read all about the different asset classes people invest in and so we just we have a great website full of this kind of information. Fantastic. And you also have a book that you're offering anyone who wants to a lot opt in. So tell us about the book, what's inside. <laughs> it's now standing. It's written by my dear friend Leonard Barron. It's called Real Estate Investing, Cash Flows, and Due Diligence. So if you're thinking about investing in real estate with your IRA and you'd like to learn how to do your due diligence, this is a book that can help you do that. Uh, written by, uh, he calls himself Professor Barron, Leonard Barron. Um, and so we're offering that to your listeners. So all you have to do, there'll be a link below in the description and as well as on our website for you to click in. If you didn't give the information, are you mailing the books or is it a download? It would be a mail. Okay, so you need to address all your information, fill that out, and they would be mailed to you. And that's a great gift. No matter what you're doing, you need to know all that you need to know about real estate. As we say, an informed investor is a happy investor. There you go. So, so Karen, what would you like to leave our listeners with today? Just no matter what you do today, do yourself a favor save for retirement, whether it's self-directed or you, you know, increase your 401k contribution, write a check to your IRA, 
pay yourself, not the IRS, save for retirement because we don't like to think about getting older, but guess what? I mean, not you and <laughs> other people get older. And so it's going to happen. And so do be your own best friend, save for retirement, no matter how, how that looks. Thank you. And thank you, Melina, for joining us and some of the other ladies that are on the chat. Thank you so much. Um, I want to again remind you to subscribe to us on YouTube and connect with us on our social media. And remember, for future, connect with Homework, H-O-M-W-O-R-K. And that's where you can live where you work, work where you live, anywhere in the world. So thank you again, Karen. Karen and until we meet again, stay empowered.